Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, we're going to take a look at their new modern interface that's been rolling out to the TV boxes that Plex supports. So this is the new interface. This is the old one, and we're going to look at all the little differences between the two and look at how you can customize this new interface as well. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this new interface is all about. Now, as you saw when we first started the video, the big noticeable difference between this new modern layout and the classic layout is that there was some redundancy in the classic layout before, in that you had the thumbnail, which generally will tell you what the piece of media is, along with some text beneath it. So on the new interface here, as you can see, uh, it just gives you the thumbnail. What's interesting too is that when we uh, go ahead and click down on both interfaces here, you can see that on the new interface, you get a lot of the metadata without having to jump into the uh, clip first. So if we just browse around here, you can see that as I just go through the different pieces of media here, I can see what they're about. It'll pull down another image from the server here as well. So you get a little bit more of a deeper look at your media without having to click into it. If I do click into it, uh, we will get uh, the kinds of things that we're used to seeing here. And if I do the same over on the uh, older classic layout, you can see what you get here. So I think it looks a lot cleaner uh, with the new interface. You get the same information, but it just looks nicer. Now we're running this right now on two Android devices. I believe this works on Apple TV and the Roku as well, and I'm sure other TV platforms will be getting this layout change as things go on. So now that you see some of the basic differences here, let's dive into the new interface and see how we can make it work the way we want. Now to configure how your interface looks, you want to go into settings here, and what you'll do is browse down over to appearance. Now, depending on the TV box you're using, this menu might look a little different, but all of the titles here uh, will be the same. Now, you can see right now I've got everything on its default setting. And by default, the colors that it uses are what they call the dark mode. This is in contrast to the high contrast mode, which I'll show you in a minute. But the way the dark mode works here is basically what you saw a few minutes ago. If I go back up to movies and shows here, uh, what we get is the new modern layout. When I go over a piece of media, it's going to match the background color with the media that we selected. And you'll see that background there changing very subtly as we go from one piece of media to the next. And what it does is it looks at the colors that are either in the thumbnail or in the image that it's pulling down and it will make these really nice subtle transitions of the background as you browse through. It looks pretty good. But if you don't like this, you can go down and make some changes to it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is what they call the high contrast mode. So let's select this now and you'll see immediately that the background changes there. We don't have any dithering anymore. It is just a black background with white text. And if you don't like any of the changes that Plex has made, this is a great way to get back to how things used to look. So if I select Spy Kids here, you can see that we're getting the thumbnail. We're not getting the fancy image from the server. We've got white text on a black background, and it's all very simple and nice to look at here. Now, what's cool, though, is that you can adjust this a little bit more. So let's go back into the settings here, and we'll go over to the content layout. Now, right now, I've got everything defaulting to the theme here that we selected, which is high contrast, but I can override this. So for example, if I wanted to change the content layout to be modern, I can do that while still maintaining the background rules that the theme enforces. So let's go back out here to our menu now, and we'll go back out into the media. And as you can see here, it's pulling down the image but the background is staying black. We're not seeing those things change color. We may be getting, maybe getting a little bit of dithering here as that uh, photo dithers out, but for the most part here, it looks very close to what we had before, but with the new modern layout accoutrements here as we browse through different pieces of media. Now there's a few other settings here that we can adjust. The app background determines what happens in the background as you're browsing media. This theme by default has this setting set to none, 
and that's why we're not seeing any changes to the background color when we browse around. That's the theme default. I'm not going to change that here because if I enable artwork colors, this basically looks the same as the default dark mode theme. But I am going to go over here to the details background, and what we can do is have the background change to the artwork color when we browse in if we select the first option, or we can just have some dimmed artwork in the background or nothing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is select dimmed art just so I can show you what that looks like. And let's jump back over here to Spy Kids. And now that we're in Spy Kids, you can see that that uh, image that popped up is now in the background here uh, very subtly. So you can, again, tweak each of these themes for uh, the things that you like to see the most. And you can have this be different on different televisions depending on what your preferences are. Now you can also lighten things up with light mode. And if we jump into our appearance here, I can select that from the bottom option here on the list. And you can see it kind of reverses everything. Now I've got content layout, the app background, and the details background all on the theme default. So we can see how light mode behaves when you first jump into it. And as you can see, it is doing the classic layout because it has the name of the piece of media below the thumbnail. If I jump into it here, you can see that the detail background is set to match the artwork. And it's more subtle here because the base color is white versus black. So the uh, colors will look a little different as you're browsing around here. And you can see those things kind of fade in as we jump around to different pieces of media here. Now, if I want to adjust this, maybe go into the uh, more modern layout for the media, I can jump back to appearance here like we did before. I'll select modern now and override the default. I might want to have the details background not change. So I'll just select none here and keep it all white. We'll back out and then we'll jump into our media here. And as you can see, now that I'm browsing around, we're getting the thumbnails and the metadata. However, this is one of the little glitches I've noticed with this is that the text is not visible because of how this theme works at the moment. It doesn't change the text color to black on the detail metadata section here, unfortunately. If we dive into this, it does do it correctly here. So there are a few little glitches I've picked up on, and you might notice those as well as you're playing around with this. I found one more that I wanted to show you here too. And I'm sure the team will probably address this before too long. But if I go to dimmed art here, I found also that it was hard sometimes to read the text in the background, as you can see. So there's some things they've got to work out with these themes. But you get the idea as to how you can go with a default if you want or make some adjustments to get it tailored to just how you would like it. So let's take a look at the bubblegum theme, which is a Plex Pass color. And if we select that, we get a nice pinkish purplish hue in the background here. And if we dive back out into our content browser, uh, you can see what this looks like. So it will kind of influence its color selections when you're diving around media based on that pink hue to it. And you can see on the side here, uh, we're getting a nice little pink note on the icons as well. So pretty subtle, but if you're looking for something a little bit different, uh, this might be the way to go. Uh, we'll take a look at the one last color here, which is their moonlight color, and that will apply kind of a bluish kind of hue to everything here. So I'm sure they'll be coming up with more colors as time goes on, uh, but it is kind of nice to be able to dive in and adjust how your TV box will present content to you, and you can tweak this to work pretty much the way you would like within the bounds that they have currently set. They are always looking for feedback, of course, so let me know down in the comments below what you think, and also head over to the Plex forums and give them some ideas over there. Uh, but this is a nice way to get your TV looking just the way you want, or at least close to it, and it's nice to see some customization making its way onto these TV platforms. That is going to do it for now. I want to thank Plex for their longstanding support of the channel. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis and Handheld Obsession. 
If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.